hungry? Hey, Ma! Can we get some meatloaf? This has like a mom's basement kind of feel. Mom! 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 Still some stuff in the basement. What basement? Mom's basement with Joe Frank. That is quite possibly the dumbest thing I think you've ever said. And Corey Diab. I can't believe I take part in this show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again to another episode of Mom's Basement. Whether you're watching on iTunes or YouTube, we greatly appreciate that. As always, I'm your host, Joe, with me once again. Corey is back and better than ever. How many lives did you save last weekend? Pretty good amount. Pretty good Pretty amount good of good lives amount. saved. I actually uh, was helping him through the phone. No, you weren't. We went over this. I passed. I, I'm a nurse. We went over. What were the questions that you asked me? Do you remember the questions? Oh, what the fuck, dude? I got two hours of sleep today. Are you, are we I know. Really doing and this? I'm, I'm bantering with you while you're on two hours nah, of sleep. Nah, eat my ass. All right, so we got a lot to get into today. The Bulls are on a five-game win streak. The Bears lost again today. The Cubs have made some Aren't free you, agent signings. Wait, why'd you type Mom's Basement like that? <laughs> Mom's Basement Bull? Oh, I hate it. Because I wanted to type it like all that. Right, I was sitting right. here. Anyways, got a lot to get into. But before we do that, make sure you guys check out Crossover Report at Crossover Report on all social media and on the internet at CrossoverReport.com. Check out those articles they release and all their fire tweets and the soon-to-be crossover podcast between them and us. We're going to get so shit-faced. In mom's basement. basement. We're going to get so shit-faced to do a podcast. Possibly with liquor involved. We will be bringing the hot takes. That should be fun. Stay tuned for that. Sup, Kareem Hunt. What's Kareem Hunt doing? He's got 21 points as my flex so far in his third quarter. Love it. Fuck. Anyways, that is going into what we're going to jump into first. Ladies and gentlemen, I know you are not surprised. You watch us every week. You know the fire content we're just throwing out at you. It's a mom's basement championship in the fantasy football league. I'm not okay with this. I'm not even touching you. I'm still not okay with it. I'm just close to you. Stop. Stop. Anyways, the mom's (laughs) basement bowl must go on. The commish, that's me. Versus Kiss Titties, that's Corey. The one seed versus the two seed. Uh, pretty good season for both of us. I went ten and three. Corey nine and four. We're gonna go through the matchup here. Just want to say though, I was nine and one until you know Zeke decided to, you know. You knew the risk. Actually, get suspended. You knew the risk you were taking with that with that draft pick. Yeah. And you're lucky that Kareem Hunt panned out throughout the first six weeks of the season to really boost your team up. Oh, yeah, I like that. I like it. And now he's giving you a little bit of a spark late in the season in the playoffs here. Love it. Anyways, I like to get the championship done before week 16 and week 17 just because I don't want to risk any players resting, anything like that. I don't. don't, That's some bullshit. It it, it doesn't take the entire season either to figure out who's the best teams, who's the playoff teams. Yeah, I don't don't fuck with that. So uh, we're in the championship this week. If you're surprised, sorry. Um, I got Tom Brady going to quarterback against Corey, who has Cammy Newton going. Tom Brady, yeah. the GOAT, he is the best fantasy quarterback in my opinion, especially in my league. Now, my scoring's a little well, bit Aaron different. Aaron Rodgers when he's healthy, but... Meh. Um, my scoring's a little bit different because the way I think is quarterback is the most important position in the sport. Why is it so undervalued in standard fantasy? So I spice it up a little bit. Uh, so quarterbacks have a ton of value in my league, so I drafted Tom Brady pretty early this year. It panned out for me. I'm also pretty deep at running back, so I had a really good season. But Tom Brady v. Cam Newton, I like my matchup better. I think there's going to be a lot of points scored in that Pittsburgh New England game compared to Corey, who's got Cam Newton going at, going against Green Bay. I'm pretty sure they could put up a pretty good amount of points on Green Bay, but you just never know. I hate every time you say you never know. Ever. I, I don't think you understand how much I hate it. I love it. No, Cam Newton, uh, I feel like in order to beat you, because I, I am technically, according to the projections, I am the underdog this week versus Joe. Uh, my other quarterback, I believe I had, uh, I have Kirk Cousins. Uh, Kirk Cousins has been a little more a little more consistent. I feel like I need to take the risk-reward at the quarterback position because Cam Newton could be the guy that doesn't score at all and throws, you know, 190 yards or... You know, throws three touchdowns and runs one in. You know, it's just one of those uh, one of those games or one of those games we got to play. And I think he could do that for his Green Bay. So we're both playing three running backs this week, as you heard Corey Sick. say he's got Kareem Hunt out in his flex now. One, two running backs for me: Todd Gurley and Carlos Hyde. 
Todd Gurley, the resurrection for him under Sean McVay, and you know Jared Goff really maturing into a solid NFL quarterback has helped him tremendously. Tough matchup at Seattle for him, but Carlos Hyde against Tennessee should be able to get me some solid points. And then my third running back out my flex is Mark Ingram, who's been really, really good this year. Had a bad game last week, really. He was he heard he had a toe injury, but I'm going with him my flex because I don't like Lamar Miller. He hasn't really been giving me... Lamar Miller is the safer pick, I feel. He's pretty consistent with what he gives you. He's going to get touches, but I don't like the matchup with Jacksonville. I don't like the fact that TJ Yates might be playing quarterback for them. That's a whole... Kareem Hunt in the red zone, sup. Whole tobacco. <laughs> uh, those are the three bags compared to what Corey's got going. Going, Corey, let him know. Yeah, so, I mean, we got Kareem Hunt right now as my flex, who has uh, 78 yards on the ground. I'm not sure what he's got in the receiving game. I'm on my phone, not on my uh, computer. But... Yeah, so I started the year out with Zeke, and I eventually got to the point where I couldn't, you know, trust any of these fucking cowboy running backs. You know, Alfred Fast. Morris has a good game while I'm sitting, while I have Alfred, while I have Rod Smith in the lineup, or vice versa. You know, Rod Smith's getting all this hype, but right now I can't really trust it come playoff time. Uh, so my two backs outside of Kareem Hunt are uh, Alex Collins from Baltimore and Jamal Williams from Green Bay. Both seen a ton of touches, both getting into the end zone. Um, their projections are a lot lower than what they've actually been producing at, which is really cool. Um, I mean, that's why the, that might be why the projection is has is ooh, has me as the underdog. But um, you know, if they can if they can just keep duplicating what they've been doing, you know, they're not they're not putting up a lot of yards, but they're getting into the end zone. If they can find their way into the end zone, you know, Jamal Williams is playing Car- um, Carolina, and Alex Collins is playing Cleveland, which you know is probably. One of the best matchups he's going to get, so I'm hoping I'm hoping for the best. Now, wide receiver is what scares me because Corey has a has a two headed monster over there. If they come to play on Monday night, another thing that I hate facing is player is facing somebody who has multiple players on Monday night football because I'm going to be done. I don't got anybody playing Monday night unless I decide to slide into Sean Jackson, which I'm not going to do because uh, I have Antonio Brown as my one, but he's got Julio Jones, Mike Evans. Antonio Brown is such a fucking crutch. Every the year, last four weeks he's been every year. I mean, a god. When I had the number one pick, I took Antonio Brown. The dude is just a monster. But anywho, yeah, sorry. So Antonio Brown's my one receiver, which obviously you can't do better than that. No, but he's you my can't. number two receiver. You know, I played Demarius Thomas on Thursday night. Rip. Uh, he had a decent game. I wish he would have caught something in the second half. Yeah, he had seventeen. He had five catches for sixty-nine yards, seventeen points total in your league. In yeah. the in the first half, did nothing in the second half. And I was half. like, sick, we're going in the second half. You know, odds he gets me 20, 25 points, pretty good. That's all. That's what I wanted. But he goes and lays an egg in the second half, and the Den- Denver just, you, you, you kind of fucked me there. Like, yeah. Like, high key. And meanwhile, for me, I got Julio Jones, who probably gets conversation as the second best wide receiver in football. And then, uh, you know, I need Mike Evans to just get his fucking head out of his ass. He had... An awful game for me last week. He put up six points, I think. For He's me. had four catches in two weeks. Yeah, I, I don't like it. But at this point, I'm I'm trying to look at I'm trying to think. You know, what's going to happen? Do I actually sit Mike Evans? I mean, Mike Evans is this big body elite receiver. But my other options, you know, I got uh, uh, is it Robbie Anderson? Robbie Anderson for the Jets, who uh, got shut out last week against Denver. And you know, I got Michael Crabtree. I got Chris Hogan on here, but. You know, I just figured I got to go with the talent at this point, and you know, trust the guys who got me here. So I'm going with Evans and Jones. And this is a uh, another position that scares me is the tight end position because Delaney Walker, Corey has pretty consistent uh, tight end. He'll get you, he'll get you a lot of catches, a lot of volume in that offense. And I have Kyle Rudolph, who's been my 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 catalyst at the tight end position all year. You know, he's caught a touchdown each of the last three weeks. But you've been sitting, you're sitting him. He's hurt. Oh, that's right. I so forgot. No. Earlier today they ruled him out, I think. And oh, now did he's they? Been up, okay. Now he's been updated from doubtful to questionable. That's why I've been. That's why I didn't know I was trying to sleep all day. Yeah, I <laughs> I have Greg Olson, so this is going to be the dilemma for me in the next 12 hours or so. Greg Olson, obviously I like the Greg Olson play because if Cam Newton throws a touchdown to Greg Olson, it's negated on Corey's side. Hate it. I like to think that way, uh, but I also picked up Austin Hooper just in case I want to throw him in on Monday night as a Hail Mary if I decided to not play either Olsen I would love or if you Rudolph. Threw, I would love if you threw Hooper in on Monday Night Football. That would be I would love it because you would take the least talented of the three tight I, ends. You're absolutely right. I would love it. I would Please be taking a huge it. risk. He Please has, do it. He hasn't had a double-digit game since week 10. Love it. But I picked him up just as a kind of like, ah, uh, it's, a, it's a safety net thing just in case. 
But I, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know if you'll even take my advice, but I think you trust. I mean, it depends on what Rudolph's health is, obviously. But I think you trust the guys who got you here. If he plays, you know? he'll be in my lineup. I just don't know if he's going to play. It's an ankle injury. I don't like that, especially for a tight end. Uh-huh. I, it's just it's a tricky situation. But I think Delaney Walker, especially against San Fran, has got a clear edge over me. And then wrapping it up, we talked about our flexes. I got the Jaguars D. Corey's got the Saints D. He also has the Saints kicker and Will Lutz. And I have Robbie Gold, who I picked up this week. So it should be a pretty fun week. It should be a pretty fun championship matchup. I'm currently projected to win by 19 points, but projections don't mean shit in my opinion. It should be very, very close. A lot of money on the line here. So we're going to let you guys know how that Mom's Basement Bowl goes in next week's episode or the week after that, whichever. But uh, I'm stressing out about it. I really am. Nah, I'm chill. I lost my best player, and I'm in the championship. I'm cool with it. That's true. You can't complain there. All right, now moving to some real football out of the fantasy world. The Bears, they played tonight. And I want to start with the football by asking this question. Do you prefer Saturday night or Thursday night games? Saturday night has infinitely better quality than Absolutely. Thursday night football. Thursday night football is the worst thing. I, I think it's the, it's the worst thing for football. I mean, the quality of play is terrible. The players are more ri- at more at risk to get hurt. Um, players don't like it. You know, I, I don't think there's any upside to having Thursday night football, except that it's just a cash grab. Yeah, I agree. Uh, this Saturday night, I think they do it two weeks Sick. out of the year. Receiving touchdown for Kareem Hunt. Well, that Lego. fucking hurts. Love uh, it. Hate it. Anyways, yeah, I think this is infinitely better value, better idea for the NFL to just do this a couple times a year. If, and if... If they get rid of Thursday night football to have like four weeks of Saturday night games, I'm all for it. Yeah, that's that's much better, I think. Yeah, I, Thursday I, night I, is I like trash. It a lot. I the only like reason I enjoy Thursday nights is because I work and it gives me something to do if I'm not doing anything. I can just like NFL Mobile, watch a little football, but it's trash football most of the time mm-hmm. anyway. And I hate, hate, hate fantasy players who play on Thursday night. I they, hate they, they just have horrible performances. It's, it's absolutely like it. terrible. Mm-hmm. All right, now moving to the Bears. They obviously lost tonight on Saturday night football. They lost to the Lions. Moves them to four and ten. Two Love games it. left in the season against Cleveland and Minnesota. I really hope they lose to the Browns at this point. You you, you got to hope for four and twelve season. You know, uh, I'm kind of okay with the with which whatever direction that the team takes uh, these le- these next two weeks. You know, uh, when they played Cincinnati, a lot of the young pieces showed up and played really well, and that's what got the Bears that win. Um, so if the young pieces show up, you know, if Mitch Trubisky comes out next week and throws, you know, two touchdowns, no picks, 300 yards, you know, and the Bears win, I'm cool with it. You know, I, I, at this point, the draft, the draft pick for me doesn't really matter as much because I think the Bears are ultimately going to trade out of wherever they're at anyway. I mean, honestly, if they finish, you know, 4-12 and 12 and they have a top five pick and a team's looking for a quarterback, they're going to trade up to that spot. So, uh... I'm, I'm cool with whatever happens to the Bears this, these coming weeks as long as nobody gets seriously hurt and the Bears aren't winning because of some bullshit veteran crap. And uh, you mentioned how the offense looked last week. looked solid. Very, very good. Trubisky was good. Everybody was really good all the way around against Cincinnati, who probably has a better defense than Detroit does. Mm-hmm. And yet the Bears come out tonight and lay an egg. They had like 13 yards in the first quarter. Love it. They were gifted a field goal at the end of the first half on a, on a Theo Riddick, I think, fumbled the ball. And yeah. it gave Nugent a 40-yard field goal. So, I mean, they're just they're just the the tail of two offensive teams, and it's really, really frustrating to watch. And that points directly back to Dal Loggins and his scheme and the entire coaching staff that needs to go come New Year's Day. The Bears need to completely revamp the staff. We keep coming back to this every week, but they keep giving us reasons to come back because there's absolutely no reason the Bears should have scored 10 points against Detroit tonight. I mean, you, we, we, we've been asking them to let Mitch Trubisky off the... Uh, off the leash for quite some time now, but you know, at the same time, you give ten rushing attempts to Jordan Howard. You can't do that. You know, Mitch Trubisky threw forty six times. Today. This screamed like a Jay Cutler game. Like he <laughs> threw the ball fifty times. Yeah. People are on his back because he threw three interceptions. Like when you throw the ball with that much volume, you're going to throw interceptions yeah, unless you're, you're unless you're you know Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers, where you're just slicing everybody up no matter yeah, what. Yeah, and Mitch Trubisky doesn't have the receipt receivers either to be throwing the ball forty six times a game. You know, at best right now, he probably has like a low end number two as his number one receiver. So, yeah. you know, it's 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 not a good uh, uh, not good combination right there. And they also didn't have um, Adam Shaheen at tight end either, who was a good safety valve for Trubisky in the previous weeks. He but, played well last week. Yeah, and he they did. Finally, are letting him be a receiver instead of a oh, blocker. Yeah, love it. He's showing why they they took him in the second round of last yeah. year's NFL draft. A lot of upside there. And another question I have for just all around the Bears, the coach, the coaches in general. 
where are these adjustments at? You know, you're a coach, you're in the NFL, you're at the highest level of coaching in your sport, and you're not. It, fe it feels like they don't make any adjustments ever. Mm -hmm. They go out with the same game plan, no matter what, no matter what the score. You know, run, 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 pass, run, run, pass. It, it, it's it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. They're collecting a paycheck at this point. We've been talking about this for a few weeks now. If I see John Fox smirk one more time on the sidelines, I'm going to fucking lose it. I'm going to lose it. He's he's done. This guy's a clown. He needs to be out of there, and hopefully New Year's Day gets here faster than we all think mm -hmm. it will. I mean, the I mean, next week, Cleveland, probably bet the Bears in that game, but, I mean, Minnesota's going to stomp them. Yeah, it's good. The, the Bears will probably finish 5-11, and 11 and... You know, that should guarantee him a top five pick or pretty damn close to it. And then you just go from there and try to, you know, get in a guy who's going to develop Trubisky and you draft well and you do something in free agency. That's all you really I can saw do. a mock that had them taking Calvin Ridley, the wide receiver from mm -hmm. Alabama, first round. Obviously super, super early for that. But you obviously know what direction the Bears will be going in the draft. Yeah, wide receiver is going to be a huge need. Huge and they're in, need. they're in a good position because there's a lot of teams that need quarterbacks. There's a lot of good college quarterbacks that are probably going to be coming yeah, out. Yeah, and a lot of the receivers are kind of on that same <coughs> tier right now. I mean, Calvin Ridley is a really good receiver, but a lot of people wouldn't draft him in the top ten, so trade the hell out of the top ten. Yeah. It's really not that hard. You can do it. Cause it's and snag a second-round pick. Yep, and quarterbacks are going to be a huge need for a lot of teams, and it's a quarterback uh, top-heavy draft, so go for it. Now, this is a different side of the NBA that we have talked about so far this year. Hate it. Who are these Chicago Bulls? Their winning percentage is still 286. Well, That's fucking hilarious. They've won five games in a row. Hate I it. am stumped. Utterly shocked. So they went from losing. They had a 10-game losing streak. They have now flipped that around into a five-game winning streak. 4-0 and oh since Nikola Miritich came back from getting punched in the face. By Bobby Portis. By the way, Portis had a career-high points last night. Yeah, they combined for like 50-something points. And they're still not that's speaking off crazy. the court. They are not saying a word to each other off the court. Every oh, time they show a camera angle of them like fist bumping, I'm like, God, I can feel the tension through the screen. Miritich just... I think Miritich is playing his balls off right now because he just wants to get out of here. Which really, we talked about, he had the opportunity to do because of the clause from, like, assault in the NBA contract yeah, or whatnot. Yeah, he had the opportunity to, um, just FYI, cream hunts in the red zone again. Hated. But How? <laughs> what? How? <laughs> Get it together, charges. No, but, um, yeah, Nikola Miritich, uh, his value was probably, at, he, I think, like, he knew that his value was at the all-time low there, and, you know, uh, I don't think he would have gotten as a significant of a role on a team if he had just left right after he got punched in the face. But uh, now he can, you know, actually get traded. The Bulls will get something back, and a team trading for him will have a better idea of what he can do. Yeah, I mean, obviously, 4-0 speaks on this team. 4-0 since you're coming back. That says something. You're making an impact on this team. And, I mean, I've always loved Nikola Mirotic more than most people do. Yeah, uh, definitely more than I do. Yeah, I, 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 it's good to see him play well, but I think his time has come. Yeah, if you're the Bulls, you need to be fielding offers, like, ASAP. You need to trade him, trade you you got to stop winning. You have to stop winning. Yeah, I, trade I mean, him, five trade him. Five Lopez. in a row is ridiculous. Yeah, I never thought they'd win team. three games in a row with this I mean, what, what, this do we, what do we say? We thought, like, what, 15 to 20 wins? Yeah. That's a, that's a third of them right there. Yeah. Hate it. I absolutely hate it. And yeah, you gotta you gotta maximize your picks in this next draft. Get get some big guys in here. Maybe you sign some underrated free agents, stuff like that. So Lopez needs to be on the block. Miritich needs to be on the block. Maybe even Portis. I would put on Portis the block. on the block. Fuck He's it. playing well right now. You gotta sell when the value is absolutely at its peak. That's what it feels like right now with I Portis mean, what, and Miritich. I mean, what with this roster you have? Dunn, you have Levine, you have. Markkinen. Uh, Markkinen, and everybody else should just be kind of up for grabs. By the way, Markkinen has missed a couple of these games. I don't like and it. And they're winning. I don't like it. It doesn't make any goddamn sense. And going back to Chris Dunn, he keeps doing it. Every week we keep coming back and saying it. Chris Dunn is a baller. I was watching him do it last night. Absolute baller. I'm going to say it to you in a different way this week. I'm looking right at you, Crossover Report. Go on. Look at me in the eyes. Hate it. Chris Dunn this is, creepy. is better than Lonzo Ball. Love it. I love actually it. love it now. I fucking love it. Lonzo Ball, trash can. Chris I, Dunn, I love how people star. left Chris Dunn for fucking dead after his first year when he got no minutes. And now he's just being, he's hes lights out. I love it. I, I love believe it. we called for the Bulls to draft him out of Providence. Obviously, last season didn't work out, went to Minnesota. Or when they were going to trade Jimmy Butler or Derrick Rose, we wanted Chris Dunn, Chris Dunn back. Yeah. We want that Chris Dunn pick back. This is the Chris Dunn that yep. we had envisioned. Mm -hmm. He's really coming into his own as a player. I love it. I love him at point guard. He plays defense. He's all over the floor. Hustles. 
plays basketball. He had that very dag- smart. He had that dagger in their one win. I don't remember which game it was, but he he's a fucking baller. Kriston is it. a damn good player. He's going to be in this backcourt for years to come. It's the most wonderful time of the year. A little foreshadowing for what we're going to be doing after we talk a little bit of baseball free agency. Corey is absolutely stumped right now. Didn't tell him I was going to do that. I hate it. He hates it. I love it. I thought it was pretty good. Thought I had a pretty good singing voice right there. I don't I don't belt out too much. I probably should belt out more. Please Anyways, what the, the, the Cubs made some moves since we last spoke. They've added to the bullpen. Obviously, we know about the Chatwood signing and the rotation, but Brandon Morrow, Steve Ciszek, who I and, really like. And I skipped over it because he's not going to be in the bullpen, but a contract that I don't understand, a move that I don't get at all. I'm questioning a move that Theo Epstein made. Yes. What? Yes. What? Drew Smiley. What the fuck? <laughs> That's all I can say. What the fuck? He's not going to pitch this year. So wait, you're telling me that Theo doesn't <coughs> shit gold and he's not the perfect... The he's not perfect, but he's he's the best executive in baseball. Just just want to make it clear. But this is a move that I don't get, and maybe this is why I'm not an executive in baseball. Well, this and I don't have a law degree or whatever they need to, you know. Start. I don't know if it's law or business. Yeah, business but I think it's both. I mean, I don't know. He went to Yale or something, so clearly not uh, up there on the IQ level. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, just it, bash yourself the entire time. Yeah, right? I, I mean, just roll with it. Cue sad music, please. No, I'm just kidding. Um. Unless he has, like, a crystal ball he can see into the future and finally adding a ton to the team in 2019, I don't understand why you're going out and giving him any kind of money this year. You're basically paying this guy to use your facility to rehab. That's it. That is it. I don't understand it at all. I don't know, man. I mean... And he's not even that good. Like, he's he, not even... What is it? He hasn't been good since, like, what, 2014? 2014. 2014. I mean, yeah, you know, um... I'll just I'll just say what every Cubs fan says when I try to have a uh, rational argument with them, and I'll just say Theo. Don't say every Cub fan because Theo. we have rational arguments all the time on this show. We do, show. we do, but Theo. Theo. And I still get called out for it. Theo. What can you do? You can't win in this world. Anyway, two signings that I do like that they made. Obviously, the gaping hole in the bullpen has been somewhat patched thus far. Brandon Morrow saw a lot of him in the postseason if you were watching baseball with the Dodgers pitching every single World Series game. Obviously, they fell in the series, but... He basically resurrected his career mm-hmm. in one year. Love it. Had a great ERA, a lot of strikeouts, a lot of workload, but he's a former starter, so I like the fact that, you know, you can say he pitched a lot this year, and he did. We don't know how that's going to affect him next year, but he was a starter. He should be used to throwing a decent amount of innings, and then the submariner himself, Steve Ciszek, he's been phenomenal since coming back from a hip surgery he had a couple of years back. He's underrated, gets a lot of ground ball outs, a lot of weak contacts, so couple bullpen signings that I like personally. One more I would like to see is Brian Dunsing being brought back. Really, really underrated season last year. He was their best reliever in the postseason. Not named Wade Davis, but Wade Davis has still had some sloppy innings in the playoffs last year. I mean, you guys still need a closer, though, at some point. Um, yeah, you know, I think Brandon Morrow right now sits as their closer. I don't. I mean, I think they're still in talks with Wade Davis and his agent. Don't see that. That's, that's what I'm. Th- I'm thinking maybe Wade Davis can come back <coughs> if, if his value isn't as high as you know he thinks it is. I mean, I think they're waiting on what is it, uh, Holland to kind of set the market. Yeah, and, and from looks of it, he was going to close in going back to Colorado. Yeah, because they signed a couple of relievers. I mean, McGee's going back there. They got Brian Shaw. Colorado's going to be. Good. Team. Who I mentioned Love in an it. earlier episode where I was like targeting relievers for the Cubs. Brian yeah. Shaw was on there. Uh, Brandon Kinsler was on there. He signed with Washington. Mm-hmm. So a couple of those guys gone, but still some nice ads. I would love to see Dunsing back. Uh, the bullpen is shaping up nicer than it has been, but they should not be done yet. And they obviously still have a question mark in the rotation. They have four starters. They're looking for a fifth. Will they trade for a guy? Will they sign somebody else? We don't know. Speaking of signing somebody else... Now, I don't get this. Article's coming out, Cubs are interested in you, Darvish. Well, no shit. I mean, this is the dumbest thing ever. No shit they're interested in you, Darvish. Do, do you know about, you know you know who Sean Sears is from Sports Mockery, right? Do you? No, no, no. Oh, well, you're about to fucking learn today. Okay. So, he's a, he's a uh, he works for Sports Mockery, uh, he writes for them, and uh, he's a Cubs guy, Cubs fan. Uh, White Sox Twitter just absolutely fucking hates him. Just because... Sounds like me in the future. Uh, yeah, I mean, fuck, I hope not. I'll have, to <laughs> stop, I'll have to stop doing this podcast with you. But, no, um, basically he's just this guy who says every single big free agent 
out there or every big trade target the Cubs are in on. He has no sources, and he's just he's just irritating because he gets a lot of clicks and he gets a lot of views and shit like that. And it's it's just it's it's a little triggering. So it's like Jake Paul except for baseball. Yeah, something like that. Sure, but I, I don't fucking know. Anywho, <laughs> you don't know who Jake Paul is. I'm not talking about Jake Paul. All right, let's move on. Anywho, <laughs> so uh, we're talking about Sean Sears here. But anywho, um. He had, uh, I don't even know where the fuck I was going to go with this, because I just got distracted from what I was going to say. What were we talking about? Oh, fucking... Getting uh, clicks? He has no sources? No, what were we, we were talking about? The, Darvish? Darvish, yeah. He's like, oh yeah, uh, the Cubs are, he writes an article about how the Cubs were interested in, uh, in you, Darvish, and he puts, he puts in the tweet, along with 10 other fucking teams. <laughs> like, really. So, 10 other teams plus the Cubs, that's 11 teams, so over a third of the league is interested in you, Darvish. So everybody where is money. the news? Where is the news there? Fake news. It's 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 not fake news. It's just nobody fucking needs to know it. That's like me saying you know water is wet. You know I, I don't I don't need to write a fucking article on it. Yeah, and I think there's going to be interest there. I don't think it, it maps itself out just because they don't want to spend, you know whatever it's going to be 180 million on Darvish over six years, 160, 180 million. That's so, so much money. That's a lot of money to put on you, Darvish. Uh, that's so much. Money. And then this Manny Machado news coming out. The Orioles basically what happened here is they know they need a ton of pitching. They realize the market, the pitchers want to get paid. They realize we're not going to pay them, so what do we do? Well, how can we get young and trouble starters? You know, if you ever think that your organization is like the worst organization in baseball, just look at the Orioles and look at the Marlins. I mean, seriously, they're fucking awful. But anywho, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Continue. Yeah, so basically they realize they're not going to be able to pay multiple pitchers to come here, and there's only one way you're going to be able to get pitching, and it's trade your best player, who's an impending free agent after the season, Machado. So they put that out there now, basically what, six, seven teams making offers to them. We have a ton of teams making offers. Uh, people have thrown around the idea that the Cubs are going to be in on him. That's absolutely ridiculous. That's, not, that's not people. That's fucking Bob Nightingale fucking hashtagging the wrong Chicago team. He hashtagged the wrong Chicago team. He's been... He, it's so stupid. He wrote two different articles about how the White Sox were the most interested in Manny Machado. And then he writes a second article saying... Oh, well, the White Sox, you know, they did, they put out the best offer, but it's still not a good offer because they didn't offer their top, any of their top prospects. Whatever. Fuck that. I don't care about that. But then he hashtags the wrong team, so we have an entire fan base and fucking Bob Nightingale's mentions, you know, adding White Sox fans and telling them, oh, well, you know, I would trade, um, you know, maybe Mike Montgomery. I would trade for one year of Manny Machado. Uh, he has the... Uh, he has the same value as uh, Lucas Giolito, maybe even more. Uh, fuck these people, man. Yikes. Honestly, fuck Bob Nightingale, too. He was been a Kenny Williams whisperer for fucking years now, and he just he's over the hill. He's getting to be Bruce Levine for me. I mean, fuck Bob Nightingale. I'm sorry. I was really upset. No, with you're him. good. Anyways. <laughs> where are we at? I don't think Machado is even going to get moved because... I hope he doesn't. Because I, if they don't need to do it now. I, I think if they're going to do it, it'll be in July. That's just a personal opinion. Uh, I mean, he just doesn't have value, really. I mean, I mean he could just leave. What we, what, what do we know? I mean, first of all, when the initial article, I believe it was a Ken Rosenthal article, came out for the White Sox interest in Manny Machado, they had a 72-hour window, is what the, uh, they were working with, to approve a trade to the White Sox. That 72-hour window, I believe, has come and gone now. Um, and... The he the Baltimore Orioles did not let the White Sox negotiate an extension with Manny Machado. I don't think Manny Machado would have signed an extension. Therefore, Rick Hahn said, "Ha ah, ha yeah, yeah, we're done." And here. first of all, that article had me super super triggered on Twitter that night because I read it and it said that uh, Lucas Giolito and Michael Kopech had been discussed for um, for Manny Machado for one fucking year without a guarantee. And we an listen, extension. we can't have Corey gone because as if you saw on Twitter, if you're following us on Twitter. He has the health care policy for the entire I company. I am. Mom's basement and crossover report I, I was included. Gonna be, I was going to be done. I, I might have just given like the most epic rant up against the White Sox or against Rick Hahn on this podcast and then just dipped. His value goes beyond his voice. I love it. That's a but, quote. You should get that tattooed. Um, my value goes... Uh, what did I say? Shit. My well, value goes beyond my voice. Alrighty then. Get well, that tattooed I, on like your, your bicep. I, we're, we're, that's that's going to be... that's that's No. I'll right. pay for it. We could do it live. I'm sure that would get the, cl that, that would get the clicks. My dad knows a guy who can do it for you live. Oh well, I'm sure. I'm I'll sure. talk this. I'll I'm, talk I'm, sure, I'm sure if Big J knows, it must be a it must be a reputable guy, right? Yeah. All right. Well. Obviously. Alrighty. Anywho, back to what we were talking about. So yeah, bottom line is Manny Machado 
not ex not signing any extension. The Orioles have no leverage. I don't know what they were doing, what they were smoking, you know, what how much they were drinking that they asked for fucking Michael Kopech for Manny Machado. That's just, that's ridiculous. I mean, you know, Baltimore is not the best-run organization, like I just mentioned earlier, and they're going to lose Manny Machado for essentially nothing. And they're going to lose Zach Britton, and they're going to lose Buck Showalter, and Adam Jones is a free agent up this year. Yeah. So they are going... Downhill, sick whistle right there. It's so hard to whistle with fake teeth. You don't understand. Anyways, a couple more things before yeah. we wrap up. Top five worst Christmas songs of all time. We've got our list, and then we'll have a couple inbox questions. But first, number five on my list of the worst Christmas songs. Don't Shoot Me Santa by The Killers. The only killer song I don't like. This song is fucking trash. Go ahead. Number five, Corey. Oh, we're, we're, we're doing... We're just going back and forth. All right, fuck it. I didn't even get a chance to order them, but let me see. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Okay, um, you know what? I'm going to go. Actually, I think I might keep this order. We prepped for five days, and he doesn't have an order. <laughs> fuck that. We prepped for like 40 minutes. Uh, probably Little Drummer Boy is my fifth worst. I fucking hate it. I hate I hate just so much about it. And it was crazy, like, just a little backstory about it. I think the first time my dad ever had, like, an Apple device that could play music was in the summer. And I think the first song he downloaded was a little bit of boy. <laughs> and he started playing it in the car, and it was, like, fucking June or July. And I was like, what in the fuck is this? This is back when I was in, like, grade school or some shit. I was, I was fucking done. I, I, it is the worst... <sighs> It is the worst, not the worst, obviously, but just like, oh, I hate that fucking song so much. So my hate is only going to go up from here. Number four, Santa Baby. Don't hurry down the fucking chimney, Santa. I don't want to hear it, all right? All these girls in these Christmas songs are whores. Like, like, the uh, fuck? like well, we'll get into it in my number two on this list, but Santa Baby, hurry down the chimney. One, you don't even know this guy, and you're just inviting oh him God. down your chimney. Mm, I hate it. That's number four on my list is Santa Baby. You sound like you got rejected a lot, and it just hurts you. <laughs> Are we gonna get into the feels? Uh, we don't have to. We don't. We're gonna have talk to. about life for the next hour. Oh no, I don't like this. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, I I used to really just hate him when he was younger. I hate. I used to hate Justin Bieber so fucking much. And fucking mistletoe by Justin Bieber, which is what you I'll were playing. Be under some no, mistletoe. no, stop. Okay, that's. I awful. got Bieber fever. That's fucking right. awful. Bieber is okay? so good. No, okay, he's. He's pretty good now, but He's come along as way. a fucking, you know, six-year-old, whenever he started singing with that high-pitched voice and that mistletoe bullshit, fuck that shit. Fuck it. It is an awful Christmas song. I probably wouldn't have brought, um, put it on here if you weren't playing it before the show. It had it had to be on here. It was fucking awful. Next. Number three for me is Meli Kaliki Maka. Oh, <laughs> That's so stop. bad. That's on my list, it's, too. Yeah, it's gotta be. I, it, it's just, it's trash. It's a horrible song. I, I hate, I, I have to listen to some of these at work, like on a loop, and it's just I'm so horrible. glad I don't work retail anymore. That's fucking horrible. great. Horrible. Number three for me, Meli Kaliki Maka. For me, uh, number three is Grandma Got Run Over by the Reindeer. By Reindeer. Oh, such a bad song. It is, it is, it is awful. I don't. <laughs> I don't see the people who get into it. I think they actually they made like some kind of cartoon Christmas special for. They it. They did. They. I absolutely I, I, remember that. I, I see. I think I've watched it one time and zero desire to go back to it. Just a fucking awful song, awful concept, awful show, or awful uh, special done. All right, getting into number two. Now we're getting to the super hate. You know, I never want to hear anybody mention these. Number two for me. I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus. Now I already went into it with Santa baby. You know how I feel about these weird songs. You don't even know like the interpretation and behind these the weird song vibes either. these songs give nah. out. But, uh, it's just trash. And I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus. Listen, mommy, stop it. Just stop it, whoever you are. All right, Corey. Oh my God. Okay, uh, for number two for me, Melikaliki Maka. Yeah. I, I had it a little higher. Um, Melikaliki. Stop! 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 Seriously, <laughs> that's just the fucking worst. Just, just hearing it makes me cringe so much, and I, I don't, I don't particularly understand why. I don't. And we're not Hawaiian. Yeah, I don't so. give, I don't give a fuck about how Hawaii views Christmas. Uh, sorry if we have any listeners or viewers in Hawaii, but you know, fuck you. We Awful live in song. Chicago and we have winter, so. Yeah, we actually know what snow is. There you go. Uh, number one, I think is the same for both of us. Yeah. I actually talked about this. I saw, I, I quoted a tweet yesterday talking about this song. I said it was atrocious, should be banned. Number one. Dominic the Donkey. Fuck, I, it's, it's, that's number one on my list too. Fuck that song. Listen, what, Dominic. What, what, what even is? I don't know. What even is? There's no such thing as a Christmas donkey. I, and if I, there I, was, it certainly isn't named Dominic. I hate it. I hate it so much. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking done. I, I, this, this, 
This segment was supposed to be fun, and now it's getting me triggered. <laughs> Trigger, my triggers. Uh, my if triggers. there's if there's any songs that you guys seriously hate, leave them down in the comments. Below. Christmas songs, yeah. Yeah, Christmas songs, yeah. obviously. Yeah. I don't, don't want to. In hear. the spirit of Christmas. I don't want to hear your trash right. opinions. On yeah, other else. than Christmas, right, right, right. All right, now a couple of inbox questions, really, really quick oh, to finish fuck, off the show. Oh fuck! I don't have them pulled up. Corey's I don't have them pulled up. up. I don't have them pulled up. We're waiting. Well, I know what mine is. It, it is. Oh, that's not it. Oh god. I don't have it. Okay, right, I know right, yours. Yeah. yeah, I know yours. Yours was, uh, as far as the Cubs go, this is from my uh, buddy Ryan on Twitter. Uh, he asked one for you, one for me. For the Cubs, who do you want the Cubs to sign, or how do you want them to uh, address filling out the rest of their rotation? Because their top four is pretty much set. Top four is set. I think they're ultimately going to give the fifth spot to Mike Montgomery. He, he asked them, listen, I want to start, you know. So will he, make, will he force their hand? I don't know. I would think that they trust him and believe in him enough. <laughs> Who would have known Mike Montgomery has any fucking leverage? Hey, ever? he's been good with the Cubs. I mean, that was a good trade for them. Dan no, Vogelbach going to Seattle. See you later. Yikes, that guy's been bad there. Mike Montgomery has more extra base hits than him, and he's a pitcher. So I ultimately think they're going to let Montgomery take the fifth spot because no pressure being a fifth starter. If it doesn't work out, they can just move him back to the bullpen. They has he gotten interest from other teams? I don't know. That's a thing. Uh, I, I know the market's kind of been moving slowly, but... I mean, he's a lefty. But I mean, the, he hasn't, been, he hasn't been made available. But if now he now say they don't want to put him in the rotation, he's like, all right, well, get rid of me. And then yeah. maybe that stirs some stuff up. But if they go a different route, I would like to see just somebody who could, you know, eat innings like a Jaime Garcia or somebody the Cubs have known before Andrew Kashner. Somebody, you know, they're they're pretty low profile. They know Garcia. They saw him for years when he was with St. Louis. Something like that. Uh, but I ultimately think it's going to be Mike Montgomery. Yeah, and then the uh, one inbox question that we had for me also came from Ryan. He said, he asked me, how would you, uh, what, how would you address the White Sox bullpen? Uh, the White Sox bullpen is uh, pretty thin right now, and the bullpen market's been moving, you know, relatively slowly. I mean, Wade Davis is still out there, Holland is still out there, but um, he asked me, you know, what, would, who would you sign to, you know, fill it out? And um, I'm, I was thinking when I started to uh, think, uh, go over this question, you know, who are the guys with great stuff? who had bad years and that Coop could fix, like he sort of did with Tommy Canely, who had really good stuff. But that really didn't come to me as much as uh, a former White Sox uh, player, Addison Reed. I would like, uh, if the White Sox were to you know, sign a guy to like a two- or three-year contract, I wouldn't mind it to be Addison Reed because I think that contract, if you extend it beyond a year, has really good value. Uh, if he pitches well out of the closer spot, you can flip him again like you flipped Tommy Canely. Addison Reed does have previous success with the White Sox and under Doc Cooper. He, I think he had 34 saves in his last year as a member of the White Sox before he got traded for Matt Davidson, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, he's only 28 years old, so if you give him a three-year deal, you know, he's going to – some team's going to be interested in him at the deadline just because they'll have two more years of control on him, and he's proven to be a pretty good pitcher in this league. All right, that's going to do it for us on this episode of Mom's Basement, whether you're listening on YouTube or iTunes. We greatly appreciate that. If you want to sauce me a follow on Twitter, I am at Joe underscore Frank, F-R-A-N-C-0-1. And Corey is at, at Corey L. Diablo, D-I-A-B-L-O. We would greatly appreciate that. Uh, as always, we thank you guys so much for watching, listening, whatever it may be. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on your way out today. Leave that five-star review on iTunes because you know we're killing it here in Mom's basement. And we'll see you guys next time.